Who's going in the stream? Yay. Banjo, you are such a smart dog. There you go. Get yourself nicely washed. <laughs> okay, come on, Banjo. Come on, Luna. <laughs> Where are we off to now? <laughs> so, good morning and welcome to another Crumbs Under the Table uh, with me, Kristen Forster, and walking my dogs. Get this one turned around. Hang on a second. There they are. <laughs> um, I don't know why I laugh. They, they make me laugh every day. Anyway, I just, uh, just thought I'd quickly kind of comment a little bit more on what I started the other day, um, which was uh, actually that whole approach that Jesus has, because he, he is very deliberate as a, as a development of other leaders, um, and very successful of it as well, because you look at the <laughs> church today, <laughs> um, from a, a little gang of 12 to start with, um, uh, but one of the things that I think you see fundamentally in the way Jesus teaches, he doesn't look to make people do things that he himself is not already experienced or understands at a deeper level. And you see it um, in the little run of things, I think, that, um, uh, that, that he says in Luke 16, you know, if you're, if you're going to be trusted with, with real, real, real responsibility, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing slightly, you know, he says you've got to be faithful in the little things, you've got to be faithful with your money, <laughs> and then the key one I always think in that one is, and be faithful with the vision that belongs to someone else, um, <clears throat> so, and, um, and actually you see that in Jesus' life, you know, <laughs> um, he's faithful with his money, um, you know, he, uh, he pays his taxes, um, he, he diverts the money and the gifts that come to them after operating expenses um, into gifts elsewhere, um, and uh, he's, he was faithful for however many years, we're not totally sure, but to his father's calling and vision as a carpenter stroke builder. Um, so those, those are all kind of things you can see demonstrating those sorts of things. Um, and of course he's faithful um, in his service to John the Baptist ministry. And we often don't see that in the Gospels, but when you add all of the incidents and the conversations between the two, you realise that Jesus is far more significant in the ministry of John the Baptist than sometimes we get from a quick cursory reading of the Gospels. Um, so he served somebody else's vision. He's made it work for them. Um, but it all really kind of starts, um, this whole approach, with, with the phrase that's there in, um, in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, the, the don't look for the plank in your brother's eye, for the speck in your brother's eye, and first deal with the, the plank in your own. Um, and, and that's a real key kind of little moment. Um, morning. morning. Good girl. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you ask yourself what's the what's our obsession with the planks in other people's eyes? <laughs> really it comes down to control and which is a corruption corruption of the, the idea of real natural leadership. Um, so we like to see what other people get wrong, what they're weak in, and we like to highlight it. We can do it subtly, <laughs> we can do it crassly, you know, you can tell them outright, or you can keep on highlighting in your emails the things that you know that they're, <laughs> they're weak in. Um, so we look for those things for the sake of exercising control, that kind of corrupt form of leadership. Um, but, but real leadership grows when, as you understand a new principle, why it is that someone might be defensive or something, it's very easy, because I do this a lot in, in the coaching things, you kind of explain how, how kind of nervousness can produce certain styles of behaviour. And then you ask around and if people give you examples of other people all over the place. And I'm fine with that because we often start that way. But actually you have to turn it around that going out of today, going out of this training today, <laughs> the key thing is not can you see it in other people, but how can you see it in yourself? Uh, and I've learned over the years that, that that's more than just kind of nice. <laughs> it actually changes the quality by which you, you understand those issues. Um, and, and it's a dangerous thing to say, but you know, when it says Jesus, was a, he, he ate with sinners and he was criticised for that, but that's probably because in a level he understood it. Um, in his humanity, Jesus was subject to the same kind of temptations and, of limitation and, and the, the hormonal desire to, to, um, to receive recognition and all of those sorts of things that are built into us, and I believe are God-given gifts, 
they're not things to be suppressed it's just they're not things to be acted out of um, all the time <laughs> so jesus would have understood why it is they behave the way they do sometimes because something in him has turned around and understood himself to understood the things he likes and dislikes, the things that would that f cause him to be annoyed and irritated, um, the things that he would hope that people would do for him. Uh, and as we understand those things in ourselves, we, we end up understanding, if you like, some of the flaws that they manifest as in other people, but with more grace <laughs> and more compassion. And, and so now, somehow, people feel it. <laughs> um, it, it it's not always kind of a logical thing that you wear the t-shirt that says I do this I do that but actually somehow people pick it up from you that you have understanding of why they do it without judging it and that can still feel awkward to someone if you understand they're being defensive but you're not judging them in it <laughs> there's something in you that understands it it doesn't kind of go to the level where it itself behaves in the same way but it's not lording it over people in that, that sense and, and that's at the heart of it is because that's the kind of key turnaround point. <laughs> am I identifying these things? Am I understanding? Am I getting hold of it because I want to man manage and manipulate you? Or is it because I want to understand them in myself and to live above them? <laughs> and so I, I don't know if there's much more to say this morning, really. <laughs> it's right there, in, right at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> don't look for the plank in your brother's eye, but first deal with this, for the speck in your brother's eye. Terrible. <laughs> Don't, don't deal with the speck in your brother's eye, but first deal with the plank in your own. And then Jesus says, and then you'll see clearly to help your brother. And, and that, that, of course, is actually what happens. If you, if you see it that way, you can then be in there in a, in a way that's kind of um, empathetic and connected, but then, and therefore doesn't feel condemning or, or, or whatever, because you understand their situation. But then um, people will actually feel your moral example. They'll feel... That they, they will more naturally follow your moral leadership <laughs> because they feel connected to you and so you can much better lead people out of certain habits of behaviour and certain styles of behaving <laughs> which in themselves are not always helpful and not always good um, <laughs> you know there's no uh, 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 because we will be naturally led by those who we feel emotionally connected to so perhaps that's part of the key of it so I probably not very articulated very well this morning I don't want to spend too long because I've got to get something I've got to get on to. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to kind of quickly pray, Father, that, um, Lord, as we get better and better uh, at understanding other people and their motivations and the reason why people do the things they do, that actually you would give us more and more grace to apply those things first to ourselves, to understand our motivations better, to better understand those around us, but not with condemnation and control, but with grace and leadership. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next time.